Hey folks, it's Gail Banks. It's after hours and I snuck out into the engine room to see what's going on. I, I asked Mike, who's usually in here, to pull one of our long engines out of stock. This is an L5P, but it's a sp specific uh, L5P. Uh, this is a Banks L5P. At Duramax, they assemble our engines with Banks parts as part of the assembly. Some of the stuff that is quite different uh, has to do with the lower crankcase and the oil pan. So the lower crankcase, and here's a billet version of one of the early experimental pieces that we machined. This is the lower crankcase. So this helps to strengthen the block. You see it here. There is a opening on both sides that can be used for a variety of uses. I like to call them turbo, turbo oil drains, but if you've got something else you're lubricating that you're running on the outside of the engine, like an air compressor or what have you, that would be also an oil return. And we've made the oil returns. If you come in tight with the camera there, the oil returns are deflected downwards. So the windage isn't part of the oil returning. You're not driving windage into the return and impeding the flow. This thing has a full cast in uh, windage tray. And there's some parts that are not in here as well because there's some fresh design going on here. And I'm currently writing the patent for what this thing does that's different uh, than anyone that came before it. I know that because I did deep research for almost a year and a half on what I've done here. I'll have a video specifically on it once I file the darn patent. Uh, so you see cast aluminum in both cases where the stock oil pan uh, is uh, sheet metal. And this has to do with a lot of the heavy duty uses I want to put this engine into. And of course, one of the dominant uses of this long engine, uh, we'll dress this as a military engine for the Oshkosh JLTV. Secondly though, we're doing a marine version of this engine. We've got a version of the engine that I intend to couple with the new GM 10L90, 10 speed automatic transmission, which ought to make a wicked combination no matter where it goes. Uh, this gives you the ability to paddle shift the darn thing. I can't wait to hot rod one of these and put it in my, one of my half ton 90 Chevy 454 SS pickups because that's gonna be one righteous hot rod, especially that 10 speed. I just, I just, it just blows my mind thinking about it. Basically, this has got the full Denso fuel system already on it from Duramax. Uh, it's had frictional testing done. It's had pneumatic and leakage testing done. Uh, but it's never been on the dyno. One more thing I wanted to show you that's kind of different has to do with the flywheel housing. And we, the, this version has uh, SAE number three flywheel housing on it, which allows us to mount an Allison, uh, Sirius Allison directly to this. Uh, but also we have a version of this build that uses this housing and this gives you the conventional GM trans pattern, which allows us to mount the six, the, pardon me, the 10L90. Uh, to the back of this uh, Duramax. One last thing that's kind of got me uh, very encouraged. Uh, in just a few months, we'll start getting this, this engine uh, with the 2020 oil cooler on it. There's one of them there. It's a massive increase uh, in cooling capacity. And this has got me really excited for, for the guys that are using our engines in existing uh, vehicles, like you've got an older truck, 
a pre-emissions vehicle of some kind you're restoring. Uh, this with a 10-speed, I can't think of anything cooler than that. Uh, diesel hot rodding is very big, and uh, I'm a huge advocate of that. With this latest fuel system, we can get virtually smoke-free uh, without after-treatment. So anyhow, I'm really excited about it. We're going to tear this one down. We've got one running. I'm killing uh, one Duramax uh, in DinoCell 2. When we find the weaknesses, the structural weaknesses in the killing a Duramax series, this engine is going to get upgrades. And I don't know, yeah, here's one of our crankshafts back here. We currently do a big pin a billet crankshaft design with our own conrods, which are larger than everything up to L5P. They're not as large as L5P because I want to spin the living snot out of one of these things. I want to go well over 6,000 RPM. So before the L5P was even on paper, we had done these big pin cranks. The bearing size is a trade out between stroking the crank, which these are stroker cranks. So we build seven liter 427 um, engines with a half a millimeter overbore and the stroke increase we have here. But there's a thing called pin to main overlap. If you talk crankshaft, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. As you build a stroker, you're moving the crank pin diameter out from the main journal diameter. So what happens is this overlap of the two diameters, that's a major component of the strength of the crankshaft. So I maintained a little better than stock pin to main overlap with these crankshafts. And uh, they're incredibly strong. We also had to develop our own rod bearing uh, size because the size I wanted didn't exist. And I got to tell you, developing a bearing and a rod to go with it, it's almost nightmarish. You don't want to do this. Now I know why all my other guys, the engine guys I've known through 61 years of doing this, have never done this. It's a fool's errand, but when it's done, it's bitching. So anyhow, what I've got to do here with these cranks is the timing wheel for crank position on an L5P is here at the back, back of the crankshaft. I'm going to take some of these billets and machine the back end of this counterweight to put this here. So anyhow, just having some fun here. This thing will become a very serious racing engine and uh, might be the first really built L5P on the planet. I hope so. This stuff's just pouring out of me, guys. If you want to see all my lunacy as it happens, subscribe right here on YouTube.